Welcome to the Project Endure Podcast, the place where we talk about life, endurance, persistence, perspective, and so much more. I'm Joe Rinaldi, and I'll be your host. Let's jump in. Before we get started, let me tell you about the only supplements that I use. For nearly 10 years, Bear Performance Nutrition has been on a mission to educate, inspire, and improve the performance of modern day athletes, adventurers, and warriors through training, nutrition, and supplementation. With effective formulas that work as hard as you do and are third party tested for prohibited substances, you can get results and reach your full potential with Bear Performance Nutrition. Head to the link in the show notes to go to the website to help me out and to help you out so that we can go one more together. Now, let's get to the episode. Welcome back to the Project Endure podcast, episode 51. We have myself, Joe Rinaldi, and we have a very special guest down in Florida, Ashley Yeshevich. Ashley, did I do that correctly? You did. That sounded awesome. It's great to be here with you, Joe. (laughs) It's great to be here with you too. Now, we got semi-connected through one of the previous guests on the podcast, episode 39, I believe, Brian Pruitt. 39 or 38? 38, I'm going to say. And Brian's an awesome human being. We had a a great conversation. uh, And when I came across your page, there were a few things that stuck out to me, um, but we'll uncover those as we go. Before we jump in, why don't you just um, describe yourself and tell the audience a little bit about who you are? For sure. For sure. No, again, appreciate you having me on, Joe. It's really an honor to to be here and dive into this conversation. Um, But yeah, so for everyone listening, my name is Ashley. I'm down here in Sarasota, Florida. My husband and I moved down here about, it'll be almost four years um, in February from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So originally from the Berg up North. Um, but life has, you know, has had its way and, and we journey down here. Um, so really just what I'm about is, um, what I've learned and I'm sure we'll dive into this more is really just, um, being open to, you know, what, um, what life has, right. And just the journey and the process of it all. You know, I, um, grew up playing competitive sports, multiple sports, and I had a goal of, um, playing division one basketball and, you know, I didn't see that through some things had happened. Um, (laughs) definitely wasn't the way I planned things out to go, but, um, because of that, you know, I, I went down a different path and I met my husband and just, it just opened up my world to so many different things. Um, I got involved in, you know, um, different, um, just different, you know, activities outside of basketball got involved in, in, into, you know, different life experiences and traveling and things like that. And it kind of just, um, happened in a way where, you know, life didn't go the way that I thought it would go. And, and that's how we build endurance to keep going. And I say that because it's like, it's really one of my key messages. And I know with you as well. So I know we'll, we'll dive into it more, but, um, yeah, my life has just been, a a lot of, um, things that I didn't (laughs) envision to happen. And I feel like it's, it's been all a gift because Mm -hmm. of it. Um, so big into fitness, um, faith is the core, you know, of, of my, (laughs) of my being here. I, I, um, it's been, it's been so big for me and just my own journey. Um, and really just try to keep an open mind and open heart to the world and, and people around me. I love that. Yeah, I think it's been said that experience is what we get when we don't get what we want. And uh, it sounds like you've had a lot of life experience. Um, For sure. And I think your story is a really cool one for many reasons. But before I get to that, I kind of just want to ask a question. If your life went the way that you saw it going or the way that you had planned, what would that actually look like at this point in time? That's a great question. I think that I plan my life out to the point where I was just going to play basketball. I couldn't see beyond the sport. Mm. So if you would ask me this question, you know, when I was 15, 16, 17, going through the recruiting process and that whole thing, 
I could only just see as far as I'm a division one basketball player. And then we'll go from there. I didn't, I didn't even have the capacity to think beyond the sport. And I think that goes into how much I tied the sport to who I was Mm. um, and just how I related, you know, to people around me and how I felt um, significant, you know, in that way was by what I could achieve. And so Mm. That's a great question because <laughs> I don't know what happens after you're done playing four years of division one basketball. Do I play overseas? I don't know. Mm. Um, so that's a really great, <laughs> that's a really great question. Yeah, no. And I think it's an important topic too, to touch on is just, you know, in terms of people who were athletes or are athletes played that sport, had that as part of who they were. And then for one reason or another, that is no longer the case. They're forced to stop playing their sport. Um, They just age out of that sport. Uh, They finish college and realize, hey, I'm not going to be a professional, so let me drop this. What happens to our identity, um, the perception of who we are as a person, as a human being? And I think that's a really deep and common question that people have to wrestle with. And so for you, after the world of competitive sport, how did that transition take place? What did that look like? And have you come to grips with the fact that you're no longer a basketball player first in life? Yeah, Joe, that's a, that's a, again, a really great question. And, um, a lot that I have reflected on over the last few years, especially, which is interesting because I I've been out of college now for, for several years, but it wasn't until recently where I actually did kind of a deep dive myself of, you know, who am I really outside of competing? Not even just basketball, but when I stopped playing basketball, I still felt this kind of void. Like I need to achieve something. I need to um, prove something, you know, that I, I can still do these things and I'm, I'm significant here if I achieve this thing. So I got into long distance running, but it was more from a, competitive side, you know, of like, all right, well, I can still do this. And, um, I think that I never really took the time myself to actually process and think about who it is that I am outside of basketball, because I still needed that. I felt like, okay, I'm done with basketball, but I still need to do that thing to, um, to feel like, you know, I I'm really worth something. And that sounds really kind of like deep and sad to say, but I think, you know, most of my life was, again, it was striving for something. It was how you see yourself. It's how other people see you. And it's hard to really find space to express yourself Mm -hmm. outside of sport when sport is really your outlet. Right. And, and it was for me with other circumstances, you know, in my life. So, um, I think now I have, oh, again, over these last few years have been a huge breakthrough for me and just becoming, I, I, I say this a lot. I'm, I'm on this journey of becoming who I already am. And when I say who I already am, it's again, it ties back into faith, um, of, of really just you know, coming into, to belief in, in letting it sink into my heart, you know, who is, who it is that God has called me to be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm on that journey, you know, who he created me to be, who I am. And he's so big, but yet so specific with each and every one of us. And so that's the journey I believe that I'm on right now. And it's really a beautiful journey. It is a beautiful journey. It really is. And it's a really hard journey. And I think it's supposed to be that way. Um, so w- what's the hardest thing that you've ever had to handle in life to this point, the hardest circumstance, something that you didn't get to choose yourself? What would that thing be? Mm. It's, it's a, it's hard. It, it feels like if I'm giving an honest answer, I think there was one year specifically for me, it was 2017 into 2018 that it really was, um, a low point for me. There was a lot of things that were happening, things that were changing. My husband and I just got engaged, which was like the journey that we were on has been crazy. That could be a whole other, (laughs) you know, a whole other story. Um, 
but things with just, you know, visa and him moving over here that because he's from overseas. And so things like that, that I'm just like, wait, what is actually happening? You know, there were family circumstances going on. And so basically what happened for me was that at the end of 2017, I was on like the mountaintop. And then when 2018 came, everything just fell apart in my world, in my internal world. Mm -hmm. And so I think I was, I was questioning a lot of how is this actually possible? Like what is actually real and um, where do I go from here? And so that was a really, it was a really low point for me. And um, it was in that space where I really just, I, I had to lean on people in the community and ultimately, you know, they really, it was, it was, people that I encountered that I met that sat with me, mm. took the time to actually listen to my experience. And in that I experienced really the love of God. And that changed everything for me internally. It didn't, didn't change anything externally. You know, there, there's definitely only the beginning of even more challenges from that point, but internally there was a major shift for me and that changed everything moving forward. Mm. So I have a quote, I have a thought, and I have a question. The quote is from Paulo Coelho. And uh, he once said, life has many ways of testing a person's will, either by having nothing happen at all, or by having everything happen all at once. And it almost sounds like you had this season of life where you were on the mountaintop. And then all of a sudden, all of these things started to happen all at once, which I'm sure would feel very overwhelming. Um, my thought is it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful when we are in a low place and other human beings sit with us in that place and they don't necessarily need to say anything special. They don't need to be anything special. They just need to be there. And that is so, so beautiful. Uh, and my question for you is what was that season actually like where you started to realize that you had this relationship with God? Um, and what were some of the emotions that and thoughts that ran through your head in that season? Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. And just to, to emphasize your point there of having somebody sitting with us, I mean, that experience, I think alone is like, you know, it's, it's somebody who sits with you that actually is so intentional in how they're listening to you, right? They don't even need to say anything at all, but just to actually be seen in that space can do the, it can be transform. It can be trans. What's the word? Transformative. <laughs> yeah. Transformative. I'm like, what's the word transformative for somebody? And it was for me. And so that's something even now that I'm like, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget those people. I'll never forget those moments. And so it's important to me now of like, wait, that's something that we can actually give to other people. Mm -hmm. We can give people safe space. We can give them time. We can sit with them and actually listen. So I just wanted to say that just to your, to your point to emphasize. Um, and then just getting back to, you know, just encountering God in that, in that season, um, you know, for me and growing up, I always thought that I had a sense of, of power or control or influence over, a situation over relationships over um you know environments or whatever it may be that i i could ha i could influence this outcome of something and so whenever bad things happened or there was you know conflict or things like that i would step in and think wait i can do something about this mm -hmm. i can make this better if i just do this thing if i just show up this way then this is all going to go away. I believed that about myself based on past experience of when I'm in this situation and I, if I'm here and I do this and this is the outcome, oh, then it must have something to do with me. Until situations come and circumstances come that you actually don't have power over you actually can't influence this outcome. There's nothing that you could do to change what happens here. And it was in that, that really just, 
honestly, it brought me to my knees in a place where I was like, I can't do this. I don't have control over this thing. Mm. And when you don't, when you realize that, when you have that moment that you don't have control over that thing, it really is, it's a place of just like surrender where I was literally crying out to God in that, in that moment of, I don't know what this is. I mean, that was, I can recall very specific, you know, I I knew exactly where I was. I knew exactly that, that kind of emotion that was so heavy. And he invites us in, in that emotion. And so when it comes to the Christian faith and everything, I think I always had this belief in a way of, I can't come to God until I, I know this about him or until I can be able to, you know, quote scripture or know these certain stories in the Bible or things like that. But that's just not the truth of who God is. And I learned that he's not waiting on the other side of our circumstances. He's not waiting for me to figure this out or for something to come to a resolution. He's actually right here with us Mm -hmm. in the middle of any and everything that we're walking through. It's just our awareness you know, it's just our awareness of him in that he never, he never leaves. He's always been here from the beginning. And so I think coming into that, it, it internally shifted something within me. That's like, wait, I can actually be here. There may be chaos around me, but he's with me and he's in me. Mm-hmm. And again, it is that peace that you can't describe but you know, it's there. And so now there's all these circumstances that are happening around me, but I have, I have the power of God within me. I have his peace. I can always access him. I have direct access to the heart of the father and coming into that allowed me to keep going despite what it is that was going on around me. Mm. And that's just the beginning of my journey with him for the last four years really. So, um, it's hard. I like, I mean, there's seasons, like it's, it's hard and that's the thing. Like it's, it circumstances are going to continue to come, Mm -hmm. but, um, but he's with us, you know, and, and it's his presence. That's a promise. And it sounds cliche, but when we seek him in these moments, like, it um he you know he's he's with us yeah i think it's so challenging in some ways to describe what you're describing because you just need to feel it to really understand mm-hmm. it um one of the things that i've been thinking a lot about recently is just how faith requires a certain level of doubt That might sound weird, but faith is believing in something that you can't fully see or explain, right? Um, And I think in in the same way, commitment is very similar. Like commitment is really meaningful only when there's doubt about the outcome, right? Because if the outcome was sure, it would be so easy to commit to things because yeah, you know the outcome. So good. And I think faith is very, very similar, but that's what's hard about it. And that's also what's so beautiful about it. And so powerful about it is that you don't need outcomes to dictate whether or not you'll have faith. You have faith despite the outcomes and that ability and willingness to surrender, to let things go, to not try and force control over the things that you can't control is immensely powerful and probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in my entire life. Um, and I appreciate you sharing that about your story too. For sure. It's um, yeah. Everything you just said, that's, it's so true. And I think with the doubt, da- you know, with the doubts, it's like, I think about, I think about questions, right. And I think about just our, in, in journeying with God, right. He invites all of those questions in, you know, like he welcomes those questions. And I think that only builds our faith and there is nothing that builds, you know, trust in him, like a lack of understanding, like not knowing, you know, we can still trust even when we don't understand, you know, trusting doesn't require the, (laughs) the, um, you know, the, the outcome, right. The, the, The knowing of the outcome. 
Um, and that's what really, like, like you said, that's what makes it a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful journey with him. Yeah. Now that was a hard season of life that something beautiful came out of, and you didn't necessarily choose that hard season. I'm curious what the hardest thing you've ever done on purpose has been and why you've chosen to do that thing. 100%. I'm smiling because the hardest thing that I have ever done on purpose is also the same thing that led me to just really so much discovery of myself because the outcome didn't happen. So to answer your question, I think the hardest thing I've ever done was, was training for a full marathon. Um, and that's because it, it took a lot. I mean, we can get into all of that, but it's definitely, yeah, I was training for, for a full marathon. And what, what was the outcome of all of the training? What was the result? So the result was, well, that's a loaded question because I didn't actually get to, um, participate in the marathon. It got canceled by mm -hmm. COVID. Um, and so that had me like, I, I pushed myself harder than I ever have before physically. And I've done like countless endless half marathons. Um, and I've always had this, like, Oh, I, every time I finish a half marathon, I'm like, dang, I don't know how people do this for another 13.1 miles. Like my body is just wrecked. You know, my knees hurt my calves, like, and then I, I, you know, was like, um, when we moved to Florida, I was like, I'm going to go back to Pittsburgh and do this full marathon. Like I got to do it. And I, I put myself through the training and it was really, really hard. And I remember right before it got canceled, one of my lap, my last training one run was over 16 miles, mm. which for me, that was the longest I've ever pushed myself. But then the marathon got canceled. And like, I just, I shut down. I just shut down because I was like, wait, what did I, I just put myself through all of that for nothing. And it was in that, that I was like, wait, there's so much more. Um, there's so much more here. And I really do believe that whenever we kind of open up our heart, like open up our posture in a way of like, when we talk about the process of there's something that this is, I really believe that God spoke to me in this, like, there's something that you don't believe about yourself to be true, that I'm going to take you through this process to show you, because I started journaling as I was training of like, why am I doing this? Why am I waking up at 5 a.m. on a Saturday? I'm sacrificing nights out with friends. I, I you know, I'm not doing all these other things. Why? And it's like, yeah, because you're going to do this. You're going to accomplish it. You're going to mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. But why? It's the why underneath the why. And that's the, uh, the journey of discovery that I went on once it got canceled. Mm. Did you end up attempting the marathon distance on your own? Or was that, uh, the end of that journey for you at that time? So what we, uh, so we, and what we ended up doing, and I say we is because I rallied around, um, three friends of mine and we ended up doing the Pittsburgh marathon virtual relay. Nice. So instead of me doing the full 26.2, I got to, um, get together, you know, with a few friends that we were all in different locations and we all completed, um, you know, a portion of the distance together to get to that 26.2. And that was honestly, that just, it's so special to me. Um, because it, it almost is like, wow, that's actually what it's about because we're doing this together and we're in this thing together. And so while I don't get to cross the finish line and, you know, complete the the whole marathon. Yeah. But I got to do it with three people around me who mean so much to me. And all three of them are, are like some of my closest people in my life. Mm. And we got to do that thing together. Like, come on, that is, that is so cool. Um, so that's, that's how that, you know, that's how, what it kind of transformed into, but, um, I haven't done a 26.2 yet. And I actually am not, I don't have this pressure on myself because poor performance pressure was a big struggle of mine too growing up. And I don't feel that. And so maybe one day I will, maybe one day I won't, but it's not going to change anything about who I am. And I've, I've like, I'm confident in that now, which I don't think I could say before. 
to be honest, I don't think many people can say that about themselves. And I'd love to dig more into that topic. But first, I just want to share the my belief that the work is the reward. The process mm-hmm. is so much more important than the product, right? The outcome pales in comparison to all of the work that goes into the process because it is those 5 a.m. training runs where you sacrifice something the night before. You get up when everybody else is sleeping and you might not want to be there, but you go out and you do the work anyway. And that changes and shapes the person that we're becoming. And regardless of whether or not you get to run the marathon or you run the marathon and you're disappointed with your time or you're thrilled with your time, none of that to me really matters because the work is the reward. Um, And I think too many people tie themselves to the outcome. Uh, a lot of times, which has elements or is entirely outside of their control, not just in running, but in life, you know, will I get this promotion? Um, Will I graduate at the top of my class? Um, Will I finish this marathon in the time that I set out for? There's so many factors that go into that outcome that are not within our control. And so I just think it's a really important topic. If we were to go outside of faith, because I want to make this as applicable to everybody as possible while acknowledging that for you and me, faith is the reason why our identity does not depend on the outcomes. What would you say to somebody who maybe is struggling with just the concept of, I need to achieve, I need to be more, I need to do more, I need to accomplish to be worth anything. Um, What would you say to that person? Absolutely. That's a, it's a great question. And what I would say there is that the one word that comes to my mind is possibility. So I think when we can learn to surrender the outcome, we actually open up the possibility for more. I think that with result oriented goals are great, right? And they can be great motivators, but I think they can also be limitations at the same time. And what I mean by that is, let's just use weight loss, I think is a, is a common goal, right. That many people have in in the fitness space, right. Where I just want to lose five pounds by the end of, you know, September for whatever reason. Well, if you say that you just want to lose five pounds and your eyes and your, your focus is going to be on that five pounds. So you're going to do what you can to lose that five pounds. But once you lose those five pounds, then what are you saying? Like, The point is that that's all you're going to get. So whatever you're doing it for is all you're going to get. And that may be okay if you're doing it for just that purpose. But I think, again, it goes into what is the why behind the why? Because I think we all have that, right? There's, there's, there's a deeper, there's a deeper um, desire that we have to do the things that we do. And so what I would say to anybody that has these kind of result oriented goals and maybe feel that sense of pressure is to really (laughs) say, kind of take the pressure off, but it's really learning, like you're saying to pursue the process because there's so much that we can discover in the process where, yeah, you wanted to lose those five pounds, but in the process of losing those five pounds, did you realize that you can actually, you know, um, you can push yourself a further in time, like out, like these things that you don't realize. Cause you're like, no, I'm just about to get the goal. And it's like, yeah, but you also are the wins happen in the process. And mm-hmm. don't forget, don't forget about that. You know, like pay attention to that and celebrate all of those wins in the process. Um, and then you realize like, yeah, not only can I lose five pounds, but like I'm stronger. I have the endurance to keep going after 10 minutes now you know? Mm. So that's, that, that's my two cents there. Yeah, I agree. And also to take a long-term perspective on the question, you know, whether it's to build muscle or lose weight or make more money or achieve a certain job title or status at the end of the day, we're all not going to be here in a hundred years, right? Anybody listening to this podcast who can understand this conversation is likely not going to be here on earth in a hundred years. So that weight you lost doesn't matter then that muscle you built doesn't matter then that job, that money, it doesn't matter then. And who we become in the process through all of that, that person gets to impact other people. And that impact gets to live on far beyond what we are stay here on earth. 
And I think that's why the process is so important to me because the process is where impact happens. It's where we become better. It's where we lift other people up. It's where we can maybe inspire someone to do just a, a little bit better themselves. And that perpetuates, that continues long after we're gone. And uh, I think that's why it's so important to me. 100% Joe. Now that's, that's, it's so good. And that's, exa- I, I love these conversations and and really just wanted to say this about you as well. And just in, in following your journey and everything that you're doing, it's, it's just that, and your impact goes far beyond, you know? Um, so I want to just throw that out there. It's a piece of encouragement for you as well in, in everything that you are, uh, not just doing, but it's who you are, um, right into the people around you and your community. And, um, even your whole coffee with strangers things <laughs> with, with, uh, stranger things. Oh my gosh. With strangers, <laughs> um, <laughs> stranger things. Um, it's just really, it's inspiring to see what you're doing. And so I really encourage you to do it because again, it's the impact. It goes far beyond, um, more than, you know, so thank you. I, I did not tell you to say that, by the way, for the people listening. You did that, not tell me to say it. I totally just said it. So <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Um, I don't sure. take compliments well, but it's just um, yeah, it's just important to me because I think you can relate from what it sounds like. A lot of people can relate. I can relate to what I'm about to say next because I've been through it. When you don't feel like yourself, when you're in a dark season of life, when you just can't put a smile on your face. And someone else does that for you by holding a door, saying something nice, um, flashing a smile, just being there and listening. It can make a world of difference, a disproportional impact compared to the, 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 the size of that act of kindness can look so small. It can have a tremendous impact on somebody's life. And uh, I will always believe that until the day that I die and beyond, because it's been so true in my life. Uh, I've told multiple stories here on the podcast, and I'm pretty sure I've told this one before, but there was a time where I actually couldn't get my Philadelphia or my Pennsylvania driver's license because I I didn't pass the eye exam. And uh, that day was so hard for me. On the inside, I was just, I was distraught. I mean, discouraged, disappointed, just downright sad. Um, And I went to work that day at the clinic and it just felt like people were nicer to me. Right. And I don't know why that was, maybe that was a God thing, but every single patient was just so kind. They were there for me, even though they didn't even realize that I needed someone to be there. Uh, And it made the world a difference for me. So I feel like I owe it to other people to do the same. And also, Ashley, I could tell by the way you carry yourself and the content you put out that you care about the same things because your impact clearly spreads beyond just you as well. Um, And that's an important point to just drive home that what we do, even the smallest things in public and private, they affect the people around us. And it's really important to be aware of that as we go about our days, because it's really easy to like walk past that piece of trash on the ground and not pick it up. Whereas if you picked it up, someone across the parking lot might see that And that might just change how they go about the rest of their day. And that ripple effect continues on. So it's just super important. So true. It really is a ripple effect. And I think too, um, just in every day, right? We all have an opportunity. There's people around us. There's there's a need around us. I think one thing Mm -hmm. is that sometimes whenever, you know, things happen or there's kind of a, there's obviously a lot of big problems in the world, right? And I think, you know, sometimes we can feel helpless because we want to do something about it, but we don't know what to do. But I think whenever we kind of take a step back and and realize, wait, there's actually need right outside my door in the community where I live, work and play. And I can show up there and I can still, you know, impact somebody's day there. Somebody. So, and like you said, it's by the little things. So I think it is just, being aware of that, you know, of people around us and, and realizing that what we see on the surface isn't the story. And mm. so if we can learn to, to, you know, uh, see beyond the surface in people, I really believe it expands our capacity to, to love. And that has a big ripple effect. So. Mm. Oh man, there's just so much good stuff here. And I, I think I want to ask you this next question because I think it'll tie in nicely to the rest of our conversation. And I know you, you have a lot to say about this topic, but when you hear the word endurance, 
what comes to mind for you? What is your definition of endurance? Uh, I, I love endurance. You know, that is, that's my, that's the word for sure. And I really believe that it is the endurance to me, right. Is the power within me to keep going no matter what goes. And what I mean by that is no matter what goes, it's, it's no matter the circumstance, right. It's no matter what happens to me. It's no matter, you know, if I'm, if we want to use running, for example, right. It's when you get to that point where you're like, ah, I don't know if I can do this. No, the power is within you that you actually can keep going. And so how am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is in running, I count the next 10 steps ahead of me. That's how I get back into it. Cause I'm like, nope, count the next 10 steps. And then after I do that, it kind of says to me, okay, I'm here right now in this present moment. I just ran it sounds silly, but it's, I just did 10 more than I did. And then I can keep going from there. But it's, it's the truth about our life circumstances, right? That again, struggle comes for, for all of us, right? It looks different on each and every one of us, but it comes for all of us. But I do believe that when we can look, you know, take kind of a, a little deeper dive in within ourselves, we can find that we can find the the power we can find the courage we all have it we all have courage within mm-hmm. us we all have the power within us it's just bringing that out but we have to look in first to be able to bring that out and realize that i'm not alone in this i can actually keep going forward and there's people around me that really do care about me that are are with me in this too mm-hmm. and it's just having that awareness right like there's pe- there's Ah, oh, like I could talk about this forever because I see it in my own life. Like sometimes we get so concerned about what people think about us. But when we say that, we say it in a way because we think people are thinking the, the worst about us, the negative things about us. But what if we actually cared more about the people around us that see the best in us, you know, that are that are encourage us, mm. that that believe in us? Like, ah, there's so much power in that, you know? So I know I just went in in a little bit of a, (laughs) it kind of went off there, but endurance, it's, it's really, it's the power within each and every one of us that, that can keep us going. And it's there. It's, it lives within us. You've said it so many times in this conversation in different ways, and I love it, but it's not about none of this that we're talking about is about what happens outside of us. None of it. Absolutely. None of it. Everything has to do with what's inside of us our perspective, how we respond, the attitude we choose, the effort we give, the way that we love, it's all within us. And I actually have the perfect quote. Uh, I've shared this in a podcast before, and I believe I mispronounced this gentleman's name. I think I, I said his name was Albert Hamus, but I believe it's Albert Camus. The S is silent, apparently. <laughs> um, I've been corrected. So this quote uh, goes, in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. And that makes me happy for it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me within me, there's something stronger, something better pushing right back. Mm, I mean, I, that's so good. I can't say it better than Albert Camus. Yeah, no, that, that is, that is great. And I think again, it, it goes to that, that perspective, right. Of just what's happening around, like, we could be, it's the story that, that the story you live in is the story that you live out. And I really believe that. So it's like, what story are we living in? Are we living in an endless winter or are we living in, like you said, like, you know, it it can, it doesn't mean that winter isn't going to happen around us. It's going to, it doesn't mean you're not going to experience the emotion that comes with the winter, but there is that power within us that again, it can shift how we're walking through that winter and knowing that, you know, spring is springs ahead, right. That there's light there and, um, we're not alone in, in the walk, but, um, yeah, that's really good. I'm like, that's good. I like these. I like these quotes you're bringing up here. They're yeah. making me think. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a huge quote guy, but the phrase you said, what was that? The story you live in is the story you live out. Yeah. Almost like what's down in the well comes up in the bucket. For sure. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's what story are you telling or, you know, what story are you living in? Because we all have a story, right? We all have things that happen to us. And so 
you know, that thing doesn't have to be your story forever. It could be something that happened to you and that's your experience and it's valid. And it, it, you know, in a way shapes who you are today whenever you kind of, you know, dig into it more, but what story are you living in? You know, what's, what are you telling yourself and what are you believing to be true about yourself and the people around you? Cause that's then what the fruit, right? That's what you're going to live out is the story that you're living in. So that's something that I'm, that I, it's a kind of a sticky note, um, reminder for me, um, anytime that I get sucked back into these thoughts that I'm like, wait, this is not the truth of who I am. You know, this isn't the truth about this situation. That looks like a past situation. Mm -hmm. This is the truth about who I am right now. Um, and this is what I'm going to choose to, to walk out, even if I'm feeling something different. Perspective is everything. Um, I've got another quote for you. I think you'll like this one too. Daniel Pink once said, optimism, as it turns out, isn't a hollow sentiment. It's a catalyst that can stir persistence, steady us during challenges, and stoke the confidence that we can influence our surroundings. Uh, And just this idea of what you expect the meaning that you derive from life, the lens with which you look at life through, it all matters so much because that's what informs our next step. And if you view life as this place that is just going to beat you down and it's unfair and it's sad and this and that, and something hard happens, yeah, you're probably going to stay down because like, why even get up if that's all that life is? But if you have this bigger perspective, you have faith, you have love, you believe in people and there are people that believe in you, then yeah, you can get back up. You can keep going um, because there's meaning behind that. Um, And I just can't, I can't express enough how much I appreciate what you said in this part of the conversation, because I think the world needs to hear it quite frankly. For sure. That's no, I, I appreciate just everything that you're, you're bringing up here in this conversation. It's really so good. And for me too, I'm sitting here like, Oh, that's, that's good. Like it's, it's, it's challenging my own thinking too. Um, which again, I think is, is really how it just expands our capacity. Right. And kind of to your point of in, in optimism, I think just knowing that there is so much more out there, but we won't know that until we actually step out, step out into it. And that includes our fears, the things that scare us the most by stepping right into that thing. There's a, there's a level of freedom in that, a level of expansiveness where you're like, whoa, I didn't even know, like now I can do this thing. It just takes like one step of faith in that. And it can open up your world to endless possibilities of discovery. Right. So, yeah. And I think something that's come up many times on this podcast, that's important to tie back in here is just the concept of when someone's going through a hard time, when you're not feeling great, when life is just a little bit heavier and maybe a little dark, it can be really easy to isolate, to pull away from people, to not want to invite people into the messiness that we might feel exist within our mind. But I would argue that it's just as important then, if not way more important to actually reach out, to step out of your comfort zone, to do the hard thing and ask for help, to invite somebody else in, even if it's just to talk and for them to listen. Um, Because you never know who can change your life. And there are people that walk in and out of our lives in different seasons. And I'm a firm believer that you're always one person away from a completely different life. Uh, I know my wife is a prime example of that in my life and also ties into my faith journey. Uh, It sounds like, or it looks like from your nodding of your head that you've experienced the same thing. Um, But people are so important um, to our process and to our life and to our story. And so um, just to put yourself out there, I think is the message because, uh, you never know who you're going to meet. For sure. That's, that's so good. And I think just to go off of that real quick, you know, I think vulnerability is a risk, right? It's a risk because there's the fear of, of rejection or somebody knows this thing about me. And so then they think that I'm part of that thing and that's who I am. And, and I understand it's, it's really hard, you know, it's hard, but, When we can open up and have a level of vulnerability with somebody, we're allowing that person to really see us. And I think when we allow somebody to see us and when we share our stories, right, we can find places of connection with each other. And just to your point, you're one person away from like, I mean, there's people, it's people in my life, right? Like it's people in my life that have just impacted me 
far beyond that. I'm like, relationships are everything, like mm-hmm. everything. And, um, and it's only by just you know, it's hard to be vulnerable, but when we do, that's what we can, we can experience in each other in relationships beyond any, any other thing in the world that we could chase, right? Whatever goals we have related to job, money, you know, (laughs) fitness, it doesn't compare to, to the relationships that we can build with each other. Mm. I want to share one more quote by Tim Keller. And my wife and I came across this quote as we were preparing for our wedding. And uh, he said, to be loved, but not known is comforting, but superficial to be known and not loved is our greatest fear, but to be Mm -hmm. fully known and truly loved is well, a lot like being loved by God. It is what we need more than anything. And um, to me, the pinnacle of relationship here on this earth is marriage. And it's so beautiful to be fully known by your, your spouse. Um, and to be fully loved by them, your flaws mm. and all. And uh, it's it's the most comforting, beautiful thing that I've experienced here on earth. Um, and I think we can get glimpses of that thing in other relationships, but it starts with being fully known, which requires us to be vulnerable. And I think that by being vulnerable first, we invite other people to be vulnerable second. We open up that space. And I think that's so important. That's so good, Joe. Yes. I'm just over here like, yes, yes, yes. That is, it's so good. It's, you know, it's innate in all of us. I think that desire to be, you know, fully seen, like fully known, fully loved. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's God. And, And to be able to experience that, like you said, with your spouse, with my husband, like, that's just, it's, there's nothing greater, you know, to be able to come into, to just being fully who you are, and seen and known and loved in that space. You're like, what is greater than that? You know, um, that's so, so good. And, and that is something that by being vulnerable, right. It can free somebody else to do the same and who knows what can happen from there in their life or what connections and relationships that can evolve from that space. Yeah. So well said. Now we've covered a lot in this conversation and we've alluded to the fact that you know, everybody goes through those times in life, those seasons, some are long, some are short. They all look a little bit different on the surface, but deep down, um, we all know what it feels like to be down, to be sad, um, maybe to feel stuck, even lost. And so this last question is an important one because you get to speak directly to the person on the other end of this podcast, listening to you. And the question is a simple one. If someone's in a dark, hard, challenging season of life, what would you say to them? first thing that I would say, I mean, you know, I I think when somebody is going through something that is dark, right? I think it's really important not to compare your dark season to somebody else's dark season, because I think that's one of the first things that we can do. And in that we actually invalidate our own experience. That's actually so worthy of you know, just being known and being, you know, a heart that's worthy of being listened to in that space. And so I think what we can do is almost diminish ourselves if I'm going through this thing, but it's not as bad as this situation. So I'm going to try to have this perspective or, you know, and, and comparison doesn't work like that because what's dark is dark is dark. And if you went through an experience that was dark and I went through something as it could look totally different, but it's still dark. And so I think that's, that is, I think my point to that is whatever you're going through, it is so valid. It's so valid. And there's people out there that actually want to show you that in a real loving, compassionate way and just want to see you. Um, and, and just know that like, you're not, I don't like to say this, you're not alone. I believe that's true that you're not alone, but I also think that can kind of take away from, Mm. you know, the, the validity of somebody's situation. You're not alone. I believe that's truth. You're not alone. But I think even more than that is that there's people who really do care about you. And what I would say is, you know, if, if you have somebody that you would consider to be a close friend to try to start there with, with a conversation, you know, and, and even just, opening up maybe more than you haven't 
before. I mean, that's kind of what I did with, with my best friend at home where we were, when I say home, I mean, back in, back in Pittsburgh where I'm from, um, is that I was going through stuff and her and I never to like, we're just like, we could talk about anything, but when it got super deep, it was kind of just like, wait, who are we? Like, we're these, you know, we're young, we're growing up, we're having fun, but it got to a point for me where I was like, Hey, this is really going, this is really happening. And like, you realize like, it's okay to, it's actually okay to, to open up and to talk about it. And she helped me through so much in, in seeking actual help after that. But, um, I think that's it, you know, like your experience is so valid and, and what's dark is dark and, um, you're not alone in it. And there's people who care about you and, um, and, and want to, to help you and see you in that. And you are so much more like you are so much more than that thing. Um, that's a big part of my story too, is like, getting into that belief, that false belief that all these things that happened to me or that happened around me said something about me, who I am. And you are so much more than those things that happened to you. So that was a long answer to your question. It was a, <laughs> it was a great answer though. And I just want to echo what you said. It's really easy to say you're not alone and it's the truth. And it doesn't mean that your experience is invalid and comparing your experience to someone else's experience shouldn't say anything to uh to diminish the weight of your situation and make you feel less than because hard is relative dark is relative life is relative and what's what's dark for one person might look completely different from what's dark from another person but it doesn't make it any less dark Um, and so Ashley, I appreciate you being a light. Uh, and if people want to learn more about your story, connect with you, just see what you're up to. Um, where should they go? For sure. Thank you, Joe. One, I just want to say thank you so much for this conversation and having me on here. It really is an honor to connect with you in this way. And I personally have just soaking in so much from our conversation. I know I will later as well, but again, I just want to encourage you to uh, continue to show up the way that you do. It's really, really powerful. Um, And no, you did not tell me to say that either. (laughs) That is all me over here (laughs) saying that, but I really believe it's true. So, um, but yeah, I, um, I do have just one social media. (laughs) It is just my first last name, um, Ashley Yashevich on Instagram. And, um, yeah, I would love to, you know, would love to connect more with, with anybody. I think that is actually the beauty in social media that we're able to connect with other people. Um, and again, you can, um, really find, I, I think it, that again, it's another journey of its own, right. <laughs> in connecting with each other, it's the beauty of it. So, um, yeah, thank you again. This has been so great. And I really, really, um, you know, appreciate this conversation and, and just connecting. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate it so much. And I know that the people listening appreciate it as well. Sounds good. Thank you, Joe. If you enjoyed this episode of the project indoor podcast, go ahead and subscribe, leave a review on your platform of choice and share this episode with a friend. It helps us get more conversations like this out to more people like you. We appreciate you and we'll talk to you next time. And one more thing, if you're looking for a community of people all striving to be better together, check out the Project Indoor Hard Things Club. The link is in the description below. We'd love to have you.